to my channel welcome back thanks to all my subscribers guys welcome back once again you join me once again on the highway and i'm gonna bring you some really good content um, and very informative you know regarding your engine getting the maximum power out of your car and also maintaining your car for on the more affordable side so stay tuned log in here we go no, I'm bad, baby. I'm back. I can't say that enough. I'm so excited to be back and to be making you guys another video and to know that, man, you guys mean so much to me that you guys are clicking that, that subscribe button. See, every single person that clicks the subscribe button, I'm not like just any other YouTuber that's just saying, yeah, subscribe, 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 because I want to, you know, whatever it is, you know, get... That's the God bullshit. Get as far, of course, I do want to do that. Sometimes I talk too much. But anyway, for every single person that hits the subscribe button, you know what that does for me? That's like fuel that gives me the, the energy to make more videos and more informative videos. Um, one, My last video I made, I had to take that video down, um, unfortunately, because the people or, you know, some of the people that were in the video, um, you know, were concerned about having, you know, their license plates exhibit you know being it that they were on our uh, what's what was called a race rally so um, you know I took that video down uh, you know of come on man what about of course so anyway forget about that just so you guys know so I'm about to approach a hundred thousand miles which is a milestone for me in this car um, I actually wait a minute let me take the key out so I'm at ninety nine thousand seven hundred and seventy three and you know guys listen i have this car right so when i bought it i was like okay i'm gonna drive it and i'm you know use use the car so that's what i intended to do with the car you know and a lot of people don't want to drive their cars for the simple fact they're you know they don't want to put miles on it because it's so it's sort of an investment you know like i said guys 996 4s you know i mean i actually just detailed the car so i'm gonna get through this really quick um i have some really good points i want to bring up i actually just finished detailing the car myself i used turtle wax on the body um turtle wax worked phenomenal it's the first time i've ever actually used a wax on the car since i've gotten it um porsche dealers generally always used to wash it and whatever when i'd go in there for some servicing but anyway so i just used turtle wax and turtle wax is amazing guys like literally it makes the car shine it does not get rid of the swirl marks but you know for you know i use my hand on this car this was all hand so had i have like if i had a machine and i had this car like i mean look at like seriously look at that look at the side of that that's all by hand with turtle wax you can literally see and this is original paint you can literally see the spray pattern of the of when they did this in the factory that's turtle wax and this was all by my own hands now if i had a machine to like a buffer machine like that would have like done even literally 10 times more than what i just did but i mean just by hand this thing looks absolutely amazing i mean you know one thing about cameras that the camera never brings over the image that you're actually looking at you know like guys like look into that paint this is turtle wax literally turtle wax just on my hand so anyway so and i also use if you look at the wheels how the wheels are clean i use the armor all which i have in another video of mine i use the armor all um armor all uh, uh brake dust repellent so let me get back in the car. So what I wanted to talk about today is I want to talk about, you know, maintaining your engine. Because one of the things that most people don't understand about these cars is, you know, these cars don't need a lot of maintenance. You know, as long as you're on top of your things, like, you know, number one thing you never, ever, ever want to, you know, disregard or not pay attention to is your oil levels. The, it, the, if you, the, you know, not paying attention to your oil levels could mean a catastrophic engine failure, cylinder bore scoring, because that's a lot of that stuff too, or your IRMS just going batshit, apeshit crazy, you know? Number one thing in this video, guys, anybody who owns a 996, it doesn't have to be a 4S, turbo, whatever. No, well, turbos are different because those engines are bulletproof. But, but then again, even if it's bulletproof, if you're not paying attention to your oil, you can literally seize up your engine. Number one with a, with a, with a, a 996 is this. 3.2, 3.4, uh, and boxers too, guys. Do not neglect your oil levels. Do not 
count on your dashboard digital um, um, uh, uh, meter to, to um, register your oil levels. Always open up. The most reliable way to check your oil levels is to open up the, the rear engine compartment, pull out the dipstick. That's the best measurement right there. And never let your car run on low oil. Do not do it. This is not a Honda, it's not a Toyota, it's not a BMW. Seriously, I own BMWs. This car, I'm telling you guys, if, you're, if your oil is even low, don't even look at it and say, oh, it's, it's low, but it's still good. No, it's not good for a Porsche. You will hear the difference in the engine because once the oil levels are low, it, it might look okay to you from the dipstick and you like comparing it to a normal car. No, please don't do it to yourself. This is when you cause stress on the engine. This is when things go wrong. This engine has to be lubricated, fully lubricated at all times. At least, I don't, I don't let this car go below three bars. If it's on the two bars, that's because I, I was in another three hours away and I couldn't make it you know, to my house or there wasn't a gas station. I never let this car go below three bars. If you have it on one bar, trust me, this car does not do well. You're going to stretch the engine. You're going to stress it anyway. So that's number one. Now, number two, um, to get the most performance out of your car, what I would always suggest is this. Number one, open up this box. I did that this week. I opened this box up and I changed the air filter. And believe it or not, like literally, it's one of the cheapest things you could do, but that thing, once the engine is breathing properly, this car, it, it's sucking in more air, it's cleaner air, and the car, is, it gives it more momentum. I'm telling you, it's the truth. Next thing you wanna do to your car is, you wanna check your spark plugs. You always have to stay on top of your spark plugs. This is another thing, guys. A lot of people might think that this car is your average car. It is not your average car. It's not a Honda, again, it's not a Toyota, not knocking those cars. What I'm saying is, this is a sports car, okay? This engine, literally, you know, some, some derivatives of it is a race engine, it's not average. So what you wanna do is, you wanna make sure, not just your spark plugs are up to, up to par, you wanna make sure that your coil, you know, the coil that goes over your spark plugs are also up to par. So that's another thing that you can, you know, cause when you buy these cars, a lot of people, they might buy these cars and think these things are done. Even though the dealer I got this car from gave me all this paperwork saying these things are done, for my own purpose and for my own sanity, I did. I changed them myself. So I changed the coils, I changed the spark plugs, and guys, I'm telling you, I noticed the difference. Even in the idle and the engine just idles, you know, because some of these cars, you know, they might idle and the car might, you know, you'll feel a shaking in the car, you know, while it's idling. There's nothing generally wrong. It could be the engine mounts or it could be your, your spark plugs. First, you know, rule I would go for is to change out the spark plugs and the coils and just to see if that's the case. If your engine is still vibrating a little bit, then it could be your engine mounts. Cause again, these cars are out of age, you know, but these engines guys, and forget about what anybody tells you about IMS and RMS and all these things. Guys, IMS is the, is like, picture 500 million people in the world, right? And one million of them have, you know, a chronic illness that is just like, if, if, if they don't treat it, they'll, it'll just, they'll, you know, forgive me for saying this, they'll die out of 500 million. You see what I'm saying? It's that small, but just the fact that it's there, the rest of the whole, you know, and all these guys on YouTube, there's an industry built around the IMS. I'm not saying change your IMS. And then there's an industry built around bore scoring. 90, uh, this is just my hypothesis from, from all the, the threads I've read and speaking to Porsche engineers in Germany about this. 99.9% .9 of all 996s that rolled off the production line will not have a problem with IMS or bore scoring, guys. Okay? It will, they will not have a problem. I don't know about that. So stop. You know, I'm not, again, don't get me wrong. I, I, when I purchased this car, I purchased it knowing that the IMS was done because that's your security. But I'm just saying that 
uh, there's an industry built on this. There's 996s out there that are still running on, their, on the original factory IMS and they're 99s. Bore scoring, stop, don't drive your car with fear or park your car. The worst thing you could do, again, and I've said this in videos before, is park your car. You need to keep driving this car because the more, when you park these cars too, one of the things that happen, the oil sits and it gets to the bottom and then it starts to eat through, well, not eat through, but seep through the seals. And as the seals soak with oil because the oil's not being used and it's just sitting there, what happens next? It starts to seep out. So that and then you'll see a little bit of seepage underneath the car sometimes. So you you know the best thing you could do for a 996 because a 996 engine is a special engine. A lot of people like to bash this car and say, oh yeah, you know uh, the engine is is plastic. You know oh, I'm not gonna buy a 996 so it could blow up. No, you got it wrong. You've been watching too many doomsday videos. 996 was one of the most engineered Porsches. This is the last Porsche that was built 100% by Porsche and not Volkswagen Group, okay? So yes, the guys who built this car were real car enthusiasts, like literally car nerds to the bone, like not engineers that are, you know, looking at specific, you know, charts and, and all this stuff. These guys literally built race cars. <laughs> Okay, not saying that the, the, the new Porsches aren't, you know, but these engines are, require more attention than your average car. Or maybe, you know, Volkswagen Group, what, it does, what, what does Volkswagen Group do when they buy a car company? They mainstream it. They literally, nothing wrong with it. What I'm saying is they make everything bulletproof. Look at Bugatti. And if you look at the Italian Bugattis, they all, they all, the Italian Bugattis, you know, it's like they have a unique personality of breaking down, you know, or needing a lot of service, right? Volkswagen Group took over Bugatti. Now you can drive a Bugatti like, like it's, like it's um, a Mercedes S500. You know, yes, it's a sports car, but a lot of that, you know, when I was growing up, you know, and I'm not going to make this very long. I say that in every video. When I was growing up, a sports car, you know, when I was looking at a sports car, Lamborghini, Ferrari, one of the attractions to those cars is you knew you're going to have you're going to have to spend more attention to this car. You're going to have to have it in your driveway and, you know, doing tinkering things on your own or even taking it into a shop. So that was one of the things about, you know, admiring like, you know, high end sports cars, because, you know, if you're a car guy, you know that, OK, I'm going to have to do certain things to this car to maintain it. I don't find the fun in having a sports car and I can just start the engine every day and drive it out there and it'll last for 100,000 miles, you know, and all I need to do is change the oil here and there. Not to say, excuse me for saying that. I don't mean I don't enjoy that. I'm just saying it's nice to know that I have to be on top of this car in order to keep it in the condition that it's supposed to be, you know? It, it, it requires me as well, you know? So anyway, guys, so that was one, those are the things that I wanted to point out, um, you know? Aside from that, once you keep these cars, you know, properly oiled, and, and again, guys, 996s, their engines burn a lot, of, lot more oil than the average Porsche. And a lot of people might think, oh, why is my car burning so much oil? Is there something wrong? If you have no issues with your air oil separator, you don't see any, you know, like, oh, I can't, let me see. You know, I'll, I'll open that later. But as you can see from the video, you see how my um, coolant is pink? If you don't, if your coolant is not brown, because once you mix the oil with the pink, it kind of turns to this brown color. And if you open it up and you look inside and you don't see any like oil or anything in there, then, you know, generally you don't really have an issue when you open this up. You know, again, I, I did this in another video. You might see some white stuff, but now the weather's warm. So in the wintertime, you'll see condensation. So anyway, but, you know, these cars burn more oil than average so don't get worried you know i would worry if i put a quarter oil in my car and then tomorrow it's down to zero again then you have an issue so um yeah so that's one of the things i wanted to cover so last but not least let me turn this car on guys this is one of the things i wanted to say now this is a big thing in the 996 community a lot of people get worried, I'll close this, 
when they come outside their car and the car is in idle and they hear this ticking like like a like a tick 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 you know like on on the right side of the engine or I don't know could be the left side mostly on the right side is where I hear the most Porsches do not get worried this is normal unless you hear like a loud banging noise like a don't 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 you know then you have issues when you hear that just that very light ticking like tick, 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 you know like it sounds like someone's hitting a pin on something that is totally normal that those are the lifters a friend of mine has a gt2 rs sounds a brand new gt2 rs at that has the same noise he's got a gt2 the same noise i have another friend who has a 991 the same noise 997 the same noise this apparently you know i don't know the schematics of it but apparently this is a porsche thing you just hear that tick 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 on the right you know on the right side of the engine so guys don't worry about that perfectly normal so there's a lot more i wanted to share but i don't want to keep rambling on and on and on because all you guys are doing is staring at me so i just wanted to bring those items up pay attention to the oil number one never let it go beyond three bars that's my rule um pay attention to your coolant number two change your coil packs change your um your uh, spark plugs change your your air filter change the front air filter also check your brake your blade your brake fluid but if you want to get really good performance out of this car stay on top of your oil this this car this car loves oil oil is this car's best friend okay so stay on top of your oil stay on top of your air filter and trust me you'll notice the difference in your um performance also balancing your tires make sure your tires are balanced and also make sure your alignment's good and you will notice the difference in your car so i'll have another video coming up guys there's a lot more i wanted to talk about but i'm already 16 minutes in and i don't want to bore you guys so like share and subscribe Get in my car.